So, I want to start by asking this question. Why, you said that you want to tell your side of the story. Why is it important to you to tell your side of the story in this? Well, my side of the story is important because my child is involved. My son is involved. But yet he's a kid. He's a minor. So, um, I don't want the media or anyone else to take um, um, what I feel may be a little bit more advantage of him. So I'll speak for him. Gotcha. So we're going to jump right into it. You know, mm -hmm. take us back to August 31st, home op season opener, um, where basically this all kind of gets started. I'm just going to ask you, you know, the first question that comes to mind, did you know that on that day your son was going to put on a different jersey, go under a different name and take the field? I did not. So um, that game was played in, I believe, LaGrange, Illinois, um, right outside of Chicago. I was not in attendance at that game. Um, had I been in attendance at that game, I believe that would have been a, a much different outcome. Um, but I was not in attendance. Um, so everything that I found out um, was after the game. When my son, of course, came home and he did let me know that he played in that game. But it was still never said, Mom, I played under a different jersey or anything like that. Let's focus on that. So you, you knew he was suspended because of what happened at the state championship the year before? So I knew that he was supposed to be suspended. Gotcha. So from my understanding, um, because he was ejected in the mm -hmm. state game in which he played in, um, he is just an automatic rule mm -hmm. um, based on uh, Misha's guidelines that if you're ejected for whatever the reasoning is, then you will have to face a one game suspension the next year. So yes, that was understood. So he comes home, he tells you, hey mom, this happened. What were you told and what was your reaction to what you were told? Well, I wasn't told anything by anyone other than my son. Mm -hmm. um, it was a couple of weeks later when I was able to um, speak with his coach who just basically verified that he did play in that game. Um, it was later um, that I found out um, he was held back from playing in another game. And we, you know, I guess it was understood or it was alleged that um, that would be the game that he would serve. Um, but that, of course, based on the rules, was not the game that he was supposed to sit out. It was the game on August the 31st that he was supposed to sit out. So he came home, he tells you that he played in that game. He played in that game. Were you confused? What, what did you think about To be that? very honest, I wasn't confused okay. because I just figured things worked themselves out. I wasn't, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I just wasn't in a, in a place to say, oh, I thought you were supposed to sit out that game. You know, I just, I, I don't know. I just guess it just never came up gotcha. um, until I really thought about it. And then I was like, wait a minute. I don't think he was supposed to play in that game. And you still know. you said you did not know it was the different jersey, the no. different name. When did you the jersey and all the jersey and all of that? I didn't find out about that until I saw it in an article. So I found out I think when everyone else found out. Um there was because this game was in Illinois, mm -hmm. I can't remember honestly who whose paper it was in. Um, it was, a, of course, an Illinois newspaper. Um, but, of course, after every game, you know, you get footage. People get footage. And so I can't remember where, where I saw, um, but there was, you know, um, pictures of him playing in a, in a different jersey so and under a different name. Were you aware of it before, you know, the newspaper article here came out, before no. the investigation? So no. you found out last week? As far as the about the jersey and the and the number and the name, no. So I did see the picture. That's what I was gotcha. speaking of. Okay. I did see the picture weeks later after that game was okay. played, showing that my son played in a different jersey mm -hmm. under a different name. Okay. I did see that. And so then you go to the coach, and what what were your thoughts going to the coach when you were going to have this conversation about what happened? Well, me and the coach really didn't discuss the the jersey thing mm -hmm. because I, I also understand it to be something you can't you know that you can 
change jerseys. But there is also a rule to that too. So that was not, um, we didn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. We just talked about him actually playing in the game. And how, how, how did you feel leaving that conversation, going in to talk to the coach? I didn't, f I felt that the decision was made um, for whatever the reason is. I didn't, you know, uh, scrutinize the coach. I didn't, you know, ask a bunch of questions. You know, um, looking back, I wish maybe I would have, but I didn't, mm -hmm. so. Were you given a reason for why this decision was made? No. Do you know who made the decision? No. Gotcha. When you look at this as a whole, you know, and, and you look at, you know, your child kind of being, you know, in the middle of this and you look at all, all that's happening now, who do you believe is responsible for this? Adults, you know. Um, I won't jump on the bandwagon and bash his coach. We know what happened. We know mistakes were made. Um, we have to be careful when we jump on the bandwagon to say, you know, um, fire the coach, get rid of the coaches, you know, mm -hmm. because coaches do matter mm -hmm. for whatever the wrong that they do. Because attached to every coach is a kid's life. You know, that some of those students, all they have is their coach. That's their only support. That's the only love that they receive. For some single parent, that's her only support system because she has to work. So coaches matter. And um, those coaches are great coaches. Yeah. I don't take that away from them, even in the mistake. And, I, and you, you use the word mistake. Um, the, head co the head coach who has since been fired came on um, our show on Friday to speak with Ahmad and used the word mistake as well. And there are people who would question whether or not it is a mistake. When you, when you put the jersey on and you change the name, it almost seems blatant. Um, do you consider this to be a mistake? I'm saying that for my son. My son made a bad choice, a bad mistake. How the mistake occurred mm -hmm. and who encouraged the mistake, I don't know. And so I have to be uh, proactive for him to speak on the mistake and the choice that he made, my son. Um, because for whatever adult, whatever, my son also, um, he's a 16 year old boy that is steady growing and steady learning, but he loves the game of football. And so he, um, I, I would hope, I'm going to believe that this is something that he will walk away from um, and he will grow from this and this will never happen again. Yeah. Let's talk about the punishment um, that the school, you know, is feeling the consequences of now. The entire coaching staff let go. The season, you know, forfeited and suspended for the year. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that? So that is my entire argument. The punishment is simply excessive, it's extreme, it's almost like overkill because you came in, you forfeited our games, you canceled our season, you gave my son an eight game suspension, you fired the head coach, the assistant coaches, and you force the athletic director into retirement. That is extreme. I don't know another word because like, wow, is this the correct punishment? Is this punishment given to every school in every neighborhood? Is this the correct punishment? So um, I just think it's excessive and I hope it can be reconsidered. What do you think about the fact that this punishment did not come from, you know, the state's, you know, athletic 
association or anything like that. It came from the Archdiocese of St. Louis. What do you, what do you think about the source of the punishment? I, um, I would hope that the Archdiocese, because while Misha, the Missouri State High School athletic program has no, um, they're not tied to any um, religion or faith principles. I just would hope that um, those, whether it's the archdiocese um, or whomever, mm -hmm. I just would hope that they would um, reconsider and look at everything that has been lost. Look at the fact that my son is 16 years old. Um, the damage has been done to the team. Those seniors, they will never get a senior night. Um, if you go ahead and fulfill this eight game suspension, that means that counsels my son's entire senior year out. I do want my son to go to college. I want my son to be an academic athlete, which is what he is. Um, he's hurting because it's him that's splattered all across the TV. It's him that, yeah, the coaches are fired, but he still has to go to school with his peers. And he has to relive this every day because people are um, taunting on social media. People are calling me. He see me having breakdowns. That plays on a child's emotions. And it's heavy for me. And I'm his parent. But everyone know parents carry their children on their hearts. Yeah. So it's heavy for me. And I'm an adult. So imagine a child who hasn't even become acquainted with all of their emotions in a proper way. That's a lot for a 16 year old. So as his mom, I have to fight for him. I have to advocate for him. I have to request a second chance. I have to say that although it, he made a bad choice that he shouldn't be, um, he should be given grace. He should be forgiven. He should have another opportunity to make it right. Yes, um, we know what happened, but we want to move on. But how do you move on when the articles are still coming out, when people are still um, on social media taunting? saying what's wrong, and it's not kids, it's adults. You know, it's not easy for me to see certain things. I've, I'm abreast of certain conversations because one thing I do know about children, children are quick to forgive. It's us, it's adults. We wanna see the punishment. We want to see the punishment from beginning to end. That's how we get our satisfaction. So I just would ask that, you know, if you out there and if you have a 16 year old, I pray that nothing like this ever happens to your child or anything else. I ask that if you are, if, well, we all been 16. We all made bad decisions, no matter how minor or how major it was. And so I just ask that when you go to speak on this situation, remember that a child is involved, my child. And it's hard because regardless of his mistake, it's my job to make sure that his spirit does not die in it. And I will do that by all costs. You, you talk about his spirit. You said that he's hurting. I'm assuming you guys are having lots of conversations. Lots you know? of conversations. What do you, how, how has he, I guess, approached this? Is this something that he's blaming himself for? Is he angry about this? 
this is something my son has taken accountability. He said, Mom, if I just hadn't got into that scuffle or whatever in state, I could have prevented all this. But my job is to remind him, you'll make many more mistakes. That was a mistake too. You, you're gonna continuously learn from your mistakes, but every mistake shouldn't repeat itself because you should be learning as you go on. New things will come up, but regardless of your mistake, that doesn't make you a bad person, that makes you guilty of a mistake, and that's all. So my job is to make sure that he doesn't keep reliving the moment, mm -hmm. if I wouldn't have. What's done is done. It's water under the bridge. You have to find a way to move on. And as your mom, I'm gonna help you get there. We gonna do it day by day, cause it's truly a day by day. Because every day, something else comes up, something else comes out. So every day, I have to encourage him. And speaking of different things coming out, I want to end this to talk about, you know, the future and moving forward. But I do have one last question about this all starting. The game in question was on August 31st. August 31st. This investigation, all these findings, comes out October 15th. Yes. So, you know, quite a gap in time for yes. something like this to be discovered. Do you have, and, and during that time, you were aware that, that to an extent of what had happened. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think about the timeline? of this? I think that somehow in some way and somewhere this information was strategically put out to cause harm to the Cardinal Ritter family. The family because we are a family. And I'm sure that whomever did this, they didn't expect the repercussions to be so severe. But that's the thing. You're playing with people's lives. You're playing with things that are irreversible. We can't go back and change it. That's hurtful. People are, um, people have lots to say. I'm really not a rumor person. I'm really not a person that, that carries, uh, they said this and they said, who is they? But I do know someone intended on doing what they did, not believing that it would cause this much harm, but it did. And I'm going to say to that person, whomever that person is, you are forgiven. This too will pass. You may have meant it for evil, but it's gonna turn around for all of our good. The Cardinal Ritter family will be stronger because of this. Everyone is, where are you gonna send your kid? Are you gonna pull your kid out? No, I'm not. I'm not. Pulling my kid out is letting that person win. Pulling my kid out says, you succeeded in your effort. My kid is an amazing player. He's going to continue to be an amazing player. You can't take his talent from him. The games, I'm going to pray over that. I, mean, I hope it changes. I hope someone somewhere says, you know what? He's a kid. He made a mistake. Let's try to redeem him somehow. And next year, we're going to be bigger and better. Cardinal Ritter's going to have a, a better program. They're going to rebuild. We're going to reload. And we're going to go on. Because guess what? You cannot stay in a dark place forever. You have to move on. 
You mentioned the Cardinal Ritter family. I was actually out there yesterday, and that was something I heard from quite a few alum, mm -hmm. from parents. Do you still feel embraced as a member of the Cardinal Ritter family I despite do. this? Does your son feel He does. Embraced? Really? He does. So initially, you know, when your feelings and your emotions are running high, you know, it's like, it's easy to just say, I want out of this. I just want to get this over with. I just, just let me be done with it. Mm -hmm. But where I'm from, you hold your head up. You go through whatever you got to go through. But the reason why today was so good for me, because I also was at Cardinal Ritter, the way those students rallied around my son. My son, <laughs> for all intent and purposes, he made student of the month for October. He's a good child who made a mistake. He has the support of his school, his administration staff. Many teachers have came up to me, many of his teachers, former and present teachers. Uh, many parents have came up to me. We're hopeful. We are hopeful. Um, and we are, we are a family. And it's starting to feel more like that now. And sometimes it takes, you know, an event um, that's caused to create a division that actually brings you together. You mentioned your son going to college. He has aspirations of playing collegiate football. Absolutely. When you think about, you know, potentially going into his senior season mm -hmm. with nine games to play, um, and you think about being suspended for eight of those nine games, mm -hmm. What are you saying? Rough. That's, that's hard to even process in your mind because you have to try to figure out how do I get the exposure? How do I get, you know, um, you can't get that back, you know, time. That's the one thing you can't get back. And, um, so that's hard to process, the, just to think of that. Is there a concern that if this doesn't get reversed, if mm -hmm. it has to go this way, that this could impact his ability to go to the school that he wants to go to? Absolutely. Absolutely. An eight-game suspension would definitely impact his ability to go to the next level, which is college football. And that is why... I must advocate, I must speak on my concerns because this is his future. This is not about 2019. This is about 2021 when it's time for him to go away to school. And then he has to look back at 2019 and say, it's still following me, you know? Yeah. And um, so, it's hard, but I believe we're going to get there. I believe that um, something is going to happen, whether or not the eight games get reversed or not. I would hope that the college coaches will see this as a learning experience, and they will still be willing to take a chance on my son. Because again, his talent is there. He would be a great addition to any college team. So, um, yes, it concerns me, but I'm trying to get to the point where it doesn't continue to worry me, if that makes sense. It does, it makes sense. Um, two last questions for you, doing okay. great, we're almost done. Um, You've said multiple times, you know, that you have conversations with your son. You know, he's taking responsibility for this, his mistake. Do not remake these mistakes. Do not, you know, but I, I still stay on that sentiment. Do, is this his mistake? Do you, when, when you think about, you know, the decision process and you think about I, the trust you put in coaches and teachers and educators. I do believe he was misguided. He was misguided. He was. 
And um, for whatever reason, other than the fact that he's <laughs> a young person that just loves the game, went in that direction. But I don't think that blaming, that's not the key. That's not the answer. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not the way we fix it. Because what's done is done. So to let go of the entire coaching staff mm -hmm. on top of the, game, the, the season being, you know, ending, what do you say to that? Knowing that, you know, your, your child, you know, comes back for senior season, we'll have a completely different coaching staff. That's still hard, too, because in that coaching staff, again, those are relationships that have been bonded. Coach BG has been coaching for 18 years. Some of those coaches that were let go, they've been coaching for years. It's very unfortunate. It's, it's heart-wrenching. After all this hits the fan, all of this happens, did you have a moment? Did you, did, did you and, and the former head coach have a conversation to acknowledge that this had happened, to talk about how you felt? Was there a moment that you two had together? We did talk. We did talk. Um, and our conversation was more so, where do we go from here? You know? I'm just not a person, I'm not a bandwagon person. If somebody's already down, you don't continue to just keep putting them down, keep kicking them, you know? And I didn't want to be that person to do that. And it's my son that's in the middle of all of this. And I hear and I know what's being said, but I'm just not that person. I'm a person to say, listen, it's messed up as it is. I hate this happen, you know. I hate that my son has to be exploited like this. I'm not sure why this happened like this. But hey, let's figure it out. You know, at this point, we need each other because I need you to help me. And you need some help. You need some lifting of your spirit. You need some encouragement, you know? So I need his help because, you know, I don't know, I know football, but I don't know enough to be like, you know, um, where did my son leave off at? You know, what stage was he in? You know, who was looking at him? Um, those are things only he would know. So that relationship will continue. I hope so, because I need him and I trust him to, to, to give me that information because he knows that information. You know, of course, you know, I believe that, they, you know, eventually somebody else new will come in, but they don't know my son. So, I, you know, not to say that they wouldn't advocate, you know, do everything that, to help him. But, but there's a history there. Right, there's a history and there's some stuff that's already, you know, has happened for him positive, good things. So I do hope that whomever comes in, you know, we could pick right back up, you know. But the, but the relationship with my son and Coach BG and the rest of the coaches, that won't change. That won't change. Do you want to add anything I didn't ask you about? I just want everyone to know that Life happens to us all. Things happen. Sometimes you can't explain them. Sometimes they don't make sense. Sometimes you don't want to talk about them. Sometimes they're embarrassing. Sometimes it's shameful. But a real human being recognizes another human being hurt regardless of color regardless of gender, it's just a human thing to be able to empathize 
with what the person's going through. And so I just ask that if you can't be for us, please don't be against us. And if you feel like you need to be against us, don't say nothing. Your mother, my mother taught me, if you can't be nice and you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing. And I think that's the best thing to say at this point. Because again, this is a 16 year old kid that was misguided. And it's my kid. And again, I just pray that your kid, whomever's kid, whoever's kid, I'm sorry, never have to experience anything like this. Because it's a heavy weight that you don't even know when it's going to fall off. You're just hoping that it will.